Now the racing scandal that stopped a nation. It was a long time ago when fine cotton was swapped with a faster horse, but the infamous ring-in saga brought down some of the biggest names in racing. Tonight, one of the men jailed breaks 35 years of silence. It's time to speak out and tell the truth. The public deserve to know once and for all what really happened. Fine Cotton's going to hold on, I think. Oh, he's just in front. The Fine Cotton saga was the biggest sporting scandal. There's been nothing like it since. The bookmakers won't be able to pay. The multi-million dollar sting that relied on a can of spray paint. Just couldn't believe my eyes. I was just dumbfounded. 35 years ago, Robert North was a wanted man. You're confident you can clean your name? Most definitely. The son of a well-known socialite ended up as one of three men jailed over the fine cotton ring-in. Robbie Waterhouse, husband of champion trainer Gay, was jailed too for lying about his involvement. To open their hearts to a man who's been banned from racing. So much drama caused from one little horse race way back in 1984. Why have you decided to break your silence on this? I'm sick of all the lies that have been told. Threats, lies and cover-ups. And if, if I don't say something now, right now, this will keep on for the next 50, 60 years. And when I'm dead and gone, they'll throw more dirt on myself and other people. And it's not on. Australia, meet fine cotton. This was the infamous fine cotton in the months after he unwittingly became part of a major crime. The merchandise line was all part of the infamy and Robert North documented every part of it. This is the fine cotton affair. First year anyhow. It's hard to explain just how big a scandal it was, dominating front pages of newspapers across the country. There's never been anything in my life that I've seen that just never stopped 24 seven. And the man keeping most of Australia informed was Channel 9's racing editor, Ken Callender. Back to Kenny Suckley. Every pub, every club, uh, every workplace, everybody was talking about fine cotton. Robert North says he was introduced to the scam by this man, John Gillespie, a small time crook with hundreds of convictions who was about to try and pull off something really big. How much do you regret now your involvement? I regret ever running into John Patrick Gillespie. As an individual, he's only a throwaway. And I'm not the only person that's suffered over the years because of him. The initial plan was for a fast horse called Dashing Solitaire to be the ring-in for the slow one, Fine Cotton. Well, Dashing Solitaire and Fine Cotton, you couldn't pick them apart. They looked identical. But a week before the race, disaster struck, with Dashing Solitaire injured. Only other horse that uh, was in training, was fit, was bold personality, even though the colour was wrong. <laughs> On the day of the race, trainer Hayden Haitana and John Gillespie arrived at Robert North's suburban home with the two horses. As soon as the back door dropped on the horse float, North says he knew they were in trouble. Fine cotton was brown. Bold personality, the substitute, was a lighter shade of brown, known as bay, but looking even worse after a botched attempt to dye his hair darker. They walked the horses into Robert North's yard and first tried to wash out the dye. But that wasn't their only issue. Fine Cotton's back legs had distinctive white markings. Bold personalities didn't. So this multi-million dollar sting now rested on a can of spray paint. Robert North says he watched on as Haitana nervously swigged a beer and Gillespie wielded the paint can trying to spray on the white markings. What were you thinking when this massive operation is now hinging on a spray paint job? Absolute disaster. It should never go ahead. You knew it was going to come unstuck? Absolutely. How the hell with the spray paint of a horse? Going onto a track with thousands of people, it's going to come, it's going to come off. There's no way. The paint job looked so bad, they decided to strap a white bandage on to cover it up. This really wasn't going to plan. How were you feeling as that horse headed off to the races? 
sick in the guts, and I just hoped that they'd just keep driving anywhere but the racetrack, even if it be Timbuktu, but just keep going. But off they went to Brisbane's Eagle Farm race course with the real fine cotton left waiting on the horse float in the car park as his different coloured stable mate headed to racetrack infamy. Fine cotton, the plunge horse began brilliantly. He's up vying for the lead on settling down. The ring in, wearing the gold colours, was so wound up from the morning's drama, he raced like a crazed beast. Fine Cotton's racing very erratically around that back corner. The horse's odds had crashed spectacularly from 33 to 1 to close to 3 to 1. Another huge problem. The plan had been for no bets placed on course, keeping the odds large so the off-course bookies would have to pay up at whatever price the horse started at. So that he'd get a good return, whether it be Australia or Vanuatu, or New Guinea or wherever it was, all the betting shops. And the word wouldn't get back to the racetrack. As they raced for home, the only challenger was Harbour Gold. If Fine Cotton's young jockey wielded the whip like this nowadays, he'd be suspended for months. He was riding almost like his life depended on it. Fine Cotton's going to hold on, I think. Oh, he's just in front. Oh, he may have won by a nose. There's nothing in it. This has one Fine Cotton. The bookmakers won't be able to pay. Fine Cotton had won by a whisker, but the ring-in was about to unravel. Next thing, uh, the jockey dismounted and a bit of commotion started. What was your knowledge of what had happened to the paint, the paint job? It didn't look good. This was what was uncovered when the bandages were removed and the substitute horse was seized by police. The horse was disqualified. Those who backed him did their money and uh, the bookies got the lot. I wasn't really worried, to be honest. I thought it'd blow over. I certainly didn't think I'd ever be arrested for it because I thought, well, I, I haven't backed the horse. Instead of blowing over, the story blew up. Trainer Hayden Haitana eventually emerging from hiding to do an interview with 60 Minutes, claiming his life had been threatened. He said, look at this here. Showed me his gun. And he says, do you want to end up like the trainer Brown? He's referring to Sydney trainer George Brown, who was tortured and murdered in his car four months before the fine cotton ring-in. The case remains unsolved. Police still actively exploring the theory that he was murdered for failing to go through with a ring-in in in an earlier Brisbane race. Hayden Haytan has got that, that in the back of his mind, so he's not going to pull out. He doesn't want to finish with a bullet in his head. Within a month, Haytana was arrested by police, hiding out at the Truro Motel north of Adelaide and extradited to Queensland amidst a frenzied media pack. Robert North was arrested too, while Gillespie remained on the run. North and Haitana were convicted and sentenced to one year in jail, handcuffed together as they headed for Brisbane's Bogger Road prison. Your mum's social standing made you an even bigger story. Yeah, she realised then she had a scallywag as a son. <laughs> Gillespie was eventually tracked down, charged and sentenced to four years jail. But an even bigger media storm was about to erupt. Welcome back. When Robbie Waterhouse married a young gay Smith, whose father was the country's biggest trainer, they were racing royalty. But the fine cotton scandal was about to rock them to their core. Well, the Waterhouse family has been uh, the biggest name in gambling in Australia for probably 50 years. I used to be a bookie, but I'm better now. Decades before bookmaker Tom Waterhouse drove us all mad with his ads, Dad, Robbie, was under the microscope over fine cotton. Were you involved in any way at all? In no, not the slightest way. Not in the slightest I had no way. foreknowledge of the fine cotton ring in, nor did I back fine cotton. But it turned out that wasn't exactly the truth. Rob Waterhouse arranged a $50,000 bet on fine cotton and lied under oath to authorities, eventually jailed for eight months' weekend detention at Sydney's Long Bay Prison. He and Father Bill were warned off all racetracks for life, prompting emotional pleas from Robbie's wife, Gay. I just think I've never known a penalty so outweighs the way of crime. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. 
The racetrack bans were overturned 14 years later. Robbie and Bill Waterhouse were both allowed to return to bookmaking. But Robert North believes there are still unanswered questions. Robbie Waterhouse has given three, or two or three different versions to people. It's up to him to tell the people of Australia what happened. Rob Waterhouse has always denied playing any part in organising the ring-in. It's very nice Thank to you see you, nice to see you. I love your scarf. Now a grandfather aged 69, Robert North lives a quiet life in Brisbane, tending to his feathered friends instead of thoroughbreds. He doesn't shirk his role in this racetrack folly, but is fed up with the lies printed about him in the many fine cotton books. The lies have not only affected myself, but my wife and family. Wife Melanie was wrongly portrayed as divorcing her husband over the ring-in, even though at the time they hadn't even met. Anybody who knows Robert knows he's not a boozy buffoon, like he has been portrayed in that book. Well, look, the truth's damaging enough in itself. It is a comedy of errors, but I don't need these lies to keep servicing about myself and others like they have been doing for the last 35 years. Enough's enough. We called Robbie Waterhouse to see if he wanted to clarify anything about the fine cotton saga. Not surprisingly, he had no comment to make.